can't be. Keep, shut up. Shut up. You're fine. I have kids, man. Interrupt. You probably don't have kids. Welcome back to U.S. Corrupt Cops, the channel where we expose the misuse of power by those sworn to protect and serve. In today's episode, we delve into the shocking story of a corrupt officer who faces instant karma after confronting an innocent woman. If you like this video, press 1. On October 17, 2021, Officer Roger Williams, Officer Zachary Espinosa, and Officer Tyrone Brooks Craig from the athens Clark County Police Department responded to an anonymous call about a potential domestic disturbance at the Athens, Georgia home of Leanna Beam and David Priest. The encounter that unfolded was captured on the officer's body cameras. We got a call about a domestic disturbance here. No, um, the dogs are back there, but we're fine. Okay, but uh, can you tell me what happened? We're just not each other. Okay. Just screaming, we used to come Can we, um, come out. yeah, can we get him to come out? What? No. What do you mean, no? I, no, no. Okay, so you can go over here and talk to him for me, please, but we need for him to go ahead and step out. No, no, no. please don't. So we're mandated by the state. We have to. We have to talk to him. We gotta talk to him. Please. No. He's fine. Okay. Come over here and talk to him. No, I would not like to. Please. No, you don't have to. Please. I know you don't. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So do you go over there with couple? We're gonna talk to him. No, I would not like to. So I'm gonna need, I need you to go right right now because I need you guys to tell me what happened. Nothing. Because, so, but look, I can see there's blood on your hand. Yeah, he. That's I his. But I understand. So, no, I cut his hand on the door. No, please. Ma no, this is this my is house. Ma'am, no. ma'am. Ma no, this is this my is house. Hey, ma'am, I'm done talking. Come over no, here now. No, this is my house. Or you go to. This is my house. Why are you opening my door? Huh? This is not okay. Oh. So, why are you hey. opening my door? Huh? This is not Open the door. Okay. I'll, I'll videotape you. Okay, well, you need to open the door, okay? Open the door, man. You do. We, we're here to the door. This is my house. Can you uh, unlock the door, man, so we can talk to you? No, why am I being held? Stop. Stop, no. or you're going to get on the ground. That's my, that's my final this? warning to you. Stop. This is my house. You can stop. No, you guys are being wrong. You're at my house. I'm being handcuffed at my house. Don't handcuff. Don't handcuff me. Stop. I told you to stop, didn't I? My house. I'm being handcuffed at my house. Hmm? Don't handcuff. Don't handcuff me. I told you to stop, didn't I? This is my house! Open the door. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Open the door, man. No. Sir, we are here I'm investigating. I have not done anything wrong. I'm here to tell you. I put myself on my own door. I know, so come out here no, and tell me. Because I, like, my, you you my gotta tell me. I understand, man, so tell me. I didn't do anything. I understand, so let us help you. No, I will. I'll tell my door. So there's, well, there's brother, there's all on the door, and there's on you. We need to talk to you, man. No, no, we're not. I need you to open the door, man. I need you to open the door. I'm not, dude. Unlock the door. What's your name? I'm not coming. Unlock the door. We're here to investigate a domestic disturbance. Unlock the door. 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 Unlock Yes, you do, man. Open the door. But I get, you're gonna have to open the door, man. Open the door. Open the door. Open the door. You gotta open the door. Right now, it's obstruction, man. I need you to open the door. Open the door. Open the door. I need you to open the door. All right, man. Yeah, we gonna have to open the door. Under what I need you to, I need you, I need open. you to open the door, man. Sir, I need for you to open the door. That's us, open man. The door. You gotta open the door, man. Open the door. Open the door. Okay. Why do you have to give me 
open the door. You need to open the door, man. I need you to open the door. I told you, man. Hey, stop! 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 stop. Right now. Stop. Or you get tased. Do you want to know why I'm getting cut, please? Yeah. Can, oh, can you yeah. please tell me why I'm being arrested? Right now, it's... What? You're detained right now. For what? For what? Just for what? For what? I'm sure for what? Did you, did police this off. This is my property. Dude. This is police off. This is my property, man. Come on. I work at St. Mary's. I know my when Mr. Priest refuses to open the door for Officer Espinosa and Officer Brooks Craig, they kick in the door, enter the home, chase down Mr. Priest, and handcuff him, claiming that he is being, quote-unquote, detained for obstruction. Section 16-10-24 of the Georgia Code states that, a person who knowingly and willfully obstructs or hinders any law enforcement officer in the lawful discharge of his or her official duties shall be guilty of a misdemeanor. In the 2017 case of Hall v. McGee, the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Georgia recognized that an individual's refusal to answer the door to police could provide officers with probable cause to arrest for a violation of the obstruction statute. However, the officers in the Hall case were executing a search warrant, which clearly gave them the authority to enter the home as the Supreme Court of Georgia explained in the 2020 case of Glenn v. State, by its express terms, Section 16-10-24 applies only when the defendant obstructs or hinders a law enforcement officer in the lawful discharge of his or her official duties. Accordingly, Mr. Priest would have a strong argument that the officers did not have probable cause to arrest him for obstruction for refusing to open the door because they did not have the legal authority to require him to do so. As discussed before on ATA, the Fourth Amendment protects citizens from unreasonable searches of their homes. This standard typically requires a law enforcement officer to obtain a judicial warrant to enter a home without permission. Although there are some exceptions to this warrant requirement, the U.S. Supreme Court outlined one in the 2021 case of Lang v. California, stating, one important exception is for exigent circumstances. It applies when the exigencies of the situation make the needs of law enforcement so compelling that a warrantless search is objectively reasonable. The exception enables law enforcement officers to handle emergency situations presenting a compelling need for official action and no time to secure a warrant. The court went on to explain that, over the years, this court has identified several such exigencies. An officer, for example, may enter a home without a warrant to render emergency assistance to an injured occupant, to protect an occupant from imminent injury, or to ensure his own safety. So too, the police may make a warrantless entry to prevent the imminent destruction of evidence or to prevent a suspect's escape. In those circumstances, the delay required to obtain a warrant would bring about some real, immediate, and serious consequences and so the absence of a warrant is excused. In this situation, although Mr. Priest did appear to be cut, it's likely that a court would conclude that his injury was not serious enough to constitute an emergency requiring the officers to enter his home against his objection to provide medical care. Ms. Beam was no longer inside the home, so there was no risk of danger to her, and there was no suggestion that Mr. Priest was destroying evidence or attempting to flee. Additionally, after the officers entered Mr. Priest's home, they tackled him and placed him under arrest without making any attempt to offer him emergency aid. Accordingly, it seems probable that a court would conclude that the officer's warrantless entry into the home violated the Fourth Amendment and that Mr. Priest's conduct did not constitute obstruction since the officers did not have the lawful authority to demand he open the door and allow them into his home. And You're going to jail now for obstruction. From what? You came to my house if you put me in stuff. You came to my property. And why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Please help me. You just came into my house. I know 
Problem. You just invited me for nothing. Why are you do why are you doing this? Why You're going to you jail for obstruction. We already explained it to you. I literally was at my house. You knocked on my door. Why are you I honestly oh, so why you got anything on you I need to know about? No, I have nothing on me. Okay. Why are you doing this to me? Go no, why are you doing this? Stop! Have a seat or you can catch no. another charge. That's your choice. I have no reason that you should turn to me. You can stop. <laughs> do not pull away from me. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. No. Get up. You did it wrong. Get up. I did I did then you can stay right here. Ms. Beam struggles against Officer Williams' attempts to place her in the police vehicle, and Officer Williams slams her onto the ground. As we have explored previously here on ATA, the Fourth Amendment also protects citizens against excessive force during an arrest. Although officers have the authority to use some degree of physical force to make an arrest, the amount of force used must be reasonably proportionate to the need for that force. In the 1989 case of Graham versus Connor, the Supreme Court established three factors that courts consider when determining whether a use of force is proportionate to the law enforcement need. The severity of the crime at issue, whether the suspect poses an immediate threat to the safety of the officers or others, and whether they are actively resisting arrest or attempting to evade arrest by flight. While officers may not use a level of force that is disproportionate to the amount required to secure a suspect, the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Florida which, like Georgia, is in the 11th Circuit, noted in the 2015 case of Morales v. Miami-Dade County, the 11th Circuit has repeatedly held that officers may use significant force during the arrest of a resisting suspect. And quoting again, the 11th Circuit has also allowed the use of significant force on arrestees resisting without violence. For instance, in the 2009 case of Lewis v. City of West Palm Beach, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals held that officers were entitled to qualified immunity in an excessive force claim where an individual lost his life after they hogtied him. Despite the fact that most of the officers testified that he was not a danger and was, quote unquote, merely resisting arrest. As such, because Ms. Beam was physically struggling against Officer Williams's arrest efforts, it is certainly possible that a court in the 11th Circuit would determine that his use of force was constitutionally reasonable, even though she seemingly did not pose a physical threat to him, or that Officer Williams was at least entitled to qualified immunity if Ms. Beam were to pursue a lawsuit against him. Okay, are you doing it? I don't do drugs. I don't do anything. We didn't say anything about drugs. Do you have any on you? Why are you treating me like this? Get up. Stop. Stop touching me. Get up. Stop touching me. Stop. Stop. Get up. No, I haven't done anything. You're treating me bad. I haven't done anything to you. I really just live here. I don't know why you're doing this. I really don't. I, I don't. I think you're a good person. Why the longer you, you stand here, the more charges you're going to get. Every time I tell you to get up and you don't, that's obstruction. But why am I getting any charges? I haven't get up. No, one, it's up That's here. one. It's up here. Get I haven't up. done anything. I haven't done anything. Get up and get in the car. Okay. <laughs> Stop. Do not touch me. Get up. Do not touch me. Let me get up on my Get up. Own. As soon as you get up, I'll let you go. You don't touch me. Get up. Let me get up on my own. Let's get up. Please let me get up get on up. my own. Get up. That's two. Please let me get up on get my up. own. Please let me get That's up on my own. That's three charges. Please get up. let me get up on my own. That's four. Please let me get up on my own. Please let me get up on my own. Please. please. Let's go in the car or I'm going to slam you on the ground again. In the car. You think I'm crazy. It's insane. In the car. You're insane. You're insane. You're insane. Get in the car. This is why people... Are Go. mad at you. I don't care. I didn't do anything. Get in the car. What have I done to you? To get get in the you? car. I don't no. care. Get in the what car. What have I done? I'm a, just a human being. Stop. 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 I have not done anything.
Get please. in the car. He's trying to hurt me. Get in the car. I live in this house. I live right here. Please, please, please. I'm not a This is my last I'm time telling like, you or I'm going to slam you on the ground. I have not done anything to him. Get in the car. Please help me. Please. I'm trying to be nice. Get in the car. I literally live in this house. I've not done anything to him. Like, Get please. in the car. No. When Ms. Beam refuses to enter the patrol car, Officer Williams slams her to the ground, knocking her unconscious. Get up. Please get this on video. Please get this on video. No, please get this on video. Get up. No, no, that's like, that's like, oh. right now. That's my Why'd you throw her down? Get up. Why'd you throw her down? She was pulling away from me. Okay, so what is that? You're right. I don't Get know. up. Guys, I'm a law abiding citizen. I'm paying for y'all goddamn taxes, bro. Come on. This now, for a Can we get Ann messing around? Officer Williams once again trips Ms. Beam, causing her to slam to the ground and hit her head. Ms. Beam continues to lay on the ground, seemingly unresponsive. According to the athens Clark County Police Department Directive 6.01 regarding use of force, use of less lethal and non-deadly force is justified when employees only use the force objectively reasonable to accomplish lawful objectives. The policy requires officers to consider the three gram factors discussed earlier in this episode when deciding what level of force to use and identifies other factors that can be considered when choosing the type of force to be applied, including the number of suspects versus the officers involved. Pre-assault indicators, size, age, and physical condition of the officer and suspect, known or perceived physical abilities of the suspect, previous violent or mental history known to the officer at the time, perception of the use of alcohol or drugs by the subject, perception of the suspect's mental or psychiatric history based on specific actions, the availability and proximity to weapons, environmental factors, injury to the officer, prolonged duration of the incident. In this instance, although Ms. Beam was struggling against Officer Williams, she was handcuffed, significantly smaller than him, and had not taken any actions to physically attack him or even put him in fear of a potential assault. Although Officer Williams would certainly be within his authority to use some force in this situation, it is likely that slamming Ms. Beam on the ground multiple times was excessive and in violation of department policy. Can you tell me what happened? We don't know what happened. We know. We don't know. They called the police? Nope. They called you to this house? Yep, they were fighting. She's put, she had blood on her hands, refusing to let us talk to him who's covered in blood. She starts pulling away from me. And then that's, her, that's what happens. I've been trying to get her in the car for 20 minutes now. She starts pulling away from me, so she has to get on the ground. Hey, man, what do you need to put her in the car? She fell down. She needs to get in the car. Get up. I you, I You gotta stand up. Let's go. Get her up. Get her up. Get her up. Get her up. We have EMS on the way. Oh, yeah. Girl, you gotta sit down. Oh, yeah. You sit down. You pull. Yeah. Come on. You gotta get in the car. Just come on. You gotta slide. You ain't. You wanna let's her up? Yeah, you can. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Just turn her feet in. They want her to. You gotta close the door because she'll come out. Yeah. Go ahead. I got it. What happened? Why are you doing this? Try to avoid this. We finally got it. Here for, we're making sure okay, then, okay, then we can leave. Yes, ma'am, then y'all can leave. It's just my.
Is this your friend? My best friend. So she's very intoxicated and she's going to jail. So she hasn't been searched. I, I couldn't get that. I like literally just got yeah, her in the car before. I think he punched uh, like a window or something. And that's all that so I that, know. So that makes sense with a broken glass noise, but I'll yeah. finish filling you in over here. So. No, that's why, because. Uh -huh. so they're gonna go see I'm going to go unmuted. Um, so I'm going to get her out. We'll see if we can't get the computer first. Just to make sure she has okay. anything on her that she has. You okay? Yeah, so I just saw you wiping off. Well, right? when we grabbed him, little... he's covered in blood when we grabbed him, and there's... I'm pretty sure she was too, and I got cut. cut. I don't everywhere. know what that's going to... We've been wiping and trying to clean stuff. There's blood all in the, like, the foyer area. So is it his blood or her blood? I think it's his blood. Um, when we showed up, you could see him talking in the kitchen. She come out and met, and met us. Yeah, that's and what she he was saying. He kind of gave me a rundown of that stuff, so and, I just... I mean, she had blood on her. The window's busted. She wouldn't let us but in. But just because she's acting the way she is. And then she defended him the whole time. And wouldn't do. She wouldn't cooperate at all. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what he, so I'm gonna, I just told him I'm gonna try to talk to her, try to calm her down a little bit, see if we can get her searched. Um, we'll, you know, EMS, you called EMS. Hey, for 1018, because right? she was, I'm pretty sure. Okay, snoring. and we'll see so. how bad. I mean, they usually get here pretty bad. So, just to make sure she was okay, and I got a little cut right there. So. I don't, I don't, we didn't get that far. Hey, how are you? I'm Sergeant Emmett of the Clark County Police Department. What's your name? Uh, Leanna. Leanna? Yes, I'd like to go out to Okay. What, um, what's your last name, Leanna? Bean. Bean? How do you spell that? B-E-A-M? Okay. So. I don't know why I'm being Okay. Held. So, here, here's the, here's the situation right now. I'm going to explain it to you, okay? Okay. So, yeah. you are currently under arrest for obstruction, okay? I you are interfering with an investigation in reference to a domestic incident that we got a phone call about. It's done. And then you repeated, and it, you, then you repeatedly refused to cooperate yeah, with the officer I'm, because you're being, and you're being detained, you're lawfully detained, and when, when you refuse to comply with an officer at that point in time, and you're resisting, and you're pulling, and you're trying to run off, and you yeah, get taken. Like, well, unfortunately, that's not an option I, at this point I, in time. I Okay. Wrong. Do you have anything on you at all that would get you in trouble? No. Do you have any guns, drugs, knives, bombs, anything like that? No. Okay. Do you have any pockets on what you're wearing at all? No. Okay. So is it is this like a dress kind of thing or something like that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. So because you are detained in anything else, we have to check you to make sure that you don't have any weapons or anything like that on you. Okay. So do, would you step out of the vehicle for me so I can use the back I of my would, hand and but check you? But you're gonna have to go back in the back of the vehicle. Okay. Why? Because you're under arrest. For what? For obstruction. Against what? Against obstruction of a police officer. That's not fair. Well, ma'am, when you refuse to comply, and when Will they're saying- to my house? Yes, ma'am, because we received a phone call in reference to a domestic incident where we heard broken glass and we need to investigate the domestic incident, and you interfered with that ma investigation. It's my house. It doesn't matter if it's your house or not. We have a requirement. Go ahead. Sergeant Caleb EMT arrives on the scene and explains to Ms. Beam why she is under arrest, claiming that the officers are required by law to investigate domestic disturbances. Section 17-4-20 of the Georgia Code does require police officers to prepare a specific family violence report whenever they investigate an incident of family violence, regardless of whether an arrest is made. The statute also states that Whenever a law enforcement officer responds to an incident in which an act of family violence has been committed, the officer shall not base the decision of whether to arrest or charge a person solely on the specific consent of the victim, or on a request by the victim, or on consideration of the relationship of the parties. However, there is nothing in this statute that specifically requires the officers to enter the home without a warrant as part of the investigation and it is likely that any such legislation would violate the Fourth Amendment. Likewise, a model law enforcement protocol for family violence incidents issued by the Georgia Commission on Family Violence, with the assistance of the athens Clark County Police Department, states that officers will not enter a private residence except on the direct invitation of the owner or resident unless probable cause exists to make an arrest. A confrontation is in progress or it is necessary to ensure the safety and welfare of the occupant. While it is possible that a court would find that there was probable cause to make an arrest based on the broken glass, because the offense involved was a misdemeanor, the Fourth Amendment would not automatically allow the officers to enter the home without a warrant to make the arrest, and there would need to be sufficient exigent circumstances to justify the entry, as we discussed earlier in this episode. 
As such, a court would likely conclude that Georgia law did not require the officers to enter the home or authorize Ms. Beam's arrest for her requests that they not do so. I, I don't like the way you are treated. I'm just a to okay. No, it's not. The way you're treating me is not okay. You don't know feel bad? I'm not doing anything. I haven't done anything. You right. don't know feel kind of bad? Oh, yeah. just, this is not helping the situation at all right now, okay? Oh my God, whatever, whatever, whatever you need to do. So, I don't like the police officer that's getting to drug me down. That's fine. I wasn't I here when that anything. happened. I'm sorry. Well, when you're well, pulling you away and resisting, that's doing something, okay? I live here. Well, you're still under arrest. Turn around and face the door for me, okay? You don't have anything on you, right? No, I don't okay. have anything we're on me. I'm just going to double check and make sure, okay? It's not fair. This is the one bear. Have a seat for me. Slide on in. Get your feet in the car, please. Melissa! Watch your head, okay? Watch your knees. So it doesn't look like there's any way for her to have anything on her or anything like that because it looks like it's pretty much just a dress. I didn't feel anything right. bulging, anything like that. Are we just obstruction times two? Is that what we have I right mean, now? Well, we, there's 41 in the, in the house after we had to go in there and get him. Uh -huh. She's not telling us anything of what happened. He's got... Friend uh, said that she got no, she got told that he punched the window and busted it, which was, if he did do that, which would explain the blocking glass yeah. in the call. Um, have y'all seen, did y'all see a window busted or anything? Yes. Okay. So, um, does his hand busted look like he punched through it? So he can go for I would do that and then uh, just, and, and then, and then up both I would, that's what I would do. So we're pretty sure he but, he punched the window yeah, okay. and broke the window. So we have criminal trespass and obstruction on him because they said he was fighting against them too. Yeah. We and got so them. we got both of them for yeah, I just wanted them to check him. That's why I was asking if he was yeah. disorderly or not. Yeah. So just figure out, just, if everybody's more calm now it seems like let's figure out charges and once we figure out charges we'll just get them out to the jail sounds good y'all just want to make sure that they're okay medically well she got taken down and not sure if she lost consciousness or not it was kind of the original concern but he's got a busted hand and he's cut all up she's conscious alert i'm full at this point so she just wants to go home she's intoxicated we got to call for a domestic and then she didn't want to get out of the way, didn't want to allow them to do their investigation, and then he's cut up and bloody, and then he didn't want to let us do anything, wanted to fight against us, so she's what? She's a no time for she answered all my questions perfectly. Oh. She doesn't want medical attention. What okay. do you I mean, that, I just wanted to make sure she was fine. Yeah, she with, said that she doesn't. All right. She doesn't think Thank you, guys. Out, I'm going to go. Yeah, you're still, you're still under arrest. After the encounter, Ms. Beam was charged with obstruction, but on August 23rd, 2022, the prosecution dropped the charges after determining that the public interest and the interests of justice warrant termination of prosecution. Mr. Priest was also charged with obstruction, as well as two counts of criminal trespass to property, but all three charges were dropped by prosecutors on May 17th, 2022, also based on the public interest and the interests of justice. The incident sparked an internal investigation, which Ms. Beam allegedly did not cooperate with, and on May 4, 2022, Police Chief Jerry Salters fired Officer Williams. Officer Williams appealed, and his termination was upheld by a personnel review board on August 14, 2023. Officer Williams filed a federal race discrimination lawsuit against athens Clark County based on his termination, and as of the date of writing this episode, the litigation is still pending. Notably, Officer Williams was involved in a prior excessive force incident in 2019, where he shot 29-year-old Salvador Salazar in the torso three times, permanently incapacitating him. A lawsuit was filed, and the case was resolved with a $250,000 settlement. Overall, Officer Williams, Officer Espinoza, and Officer Brooks Craig get an F for maintaining an aggressive and authoritarian demeanor throughout the encounter, violating Mr. Priest and Ms. Beam's Fourth Amendment rights, and demonstrating total indifference to Ms. Beam's physical well-being. Officer Williams' use of extreme and dangerous physical force against Ms. Beam was inexcusable, particularly given the readily apparent discrepancy in their size and strength, and the complete lack of assaultive intent demonstrated by Ms. Beam. While she was clearly struggling against him, she did not appear to pose any danger, and the lack of concern that Officer Williams showed as Ms. Beam lay unresponsive on the ground 
after he slammed her into the pavement was appalling. That being said, I would be remiss to overlook Officer Espinoza and Officer Brooks Craig's constitutional violations as they likely infringed on Mr. Priest and Ms. Beam's Fourth Amendment rights by entering their home over their objections without a warrant or a legitimate exception to the warrant requirement. While it is important that officers have the authority to investigate and protect victims of domestic violence, it is also essential that they do so within the framework of the Constitution. As the Supreme Court explained in the 2021 case of Lang v. California, freedom in one's dwelling is the archetype of the privacy protection secured by the Fourth Amendment, and all three athens Clark County officers did not seem to understand that Mr. Priest and Ms. Beam did not lose their Fourth Amendment rights simply because an anonymous caller reported that they were having an argument. Mr. Priest and Ms. Beam get a B- because although they both physically resisted arrest, they attempted to assert their Fourth Amendment rights by refusing consent to enter their home and repeatedly expressed their disagreement with the officer's unreasonable and unlawful actions. It should be noted that because Georgia is one of the minority of states that recognize the right to resist an unlawful arrest, both Ms. Beam and Mr. Priest would be able to argue that they did not commit obstruction by resisting their arrests because they were unlawful. However, they would likely have been in a much better position if they had not struggled. As their physical resistance authorized the use of additional force, and if a court were to determine that the officers had probable cause to make an arrest for any offense, it would likely find that the arrests were lawful, and their resistance therefore constituted obstruction. It is also essential for viewers to understand that most jurisdictions no longer recognize a right to resist an unlawful arrest, and in many states, citizens can be prosecuted for struggling against arrests, regardless of whether or not they are supported by probable cause. For these reasons, I always suggest that individuals submit to arrests, even ones they do not agree with, and contest their legality after the fact. As this encounter demonstrates, resisting can put a citizen in danger of physical harm that a court determines to be so-called reasonable force and potentially open them up to additional charges. Thanks for watching. If you found this video informative, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to stay updated on more stories exposing corruption and advocating for justice.